Hello and welcome to on fillers and its classification. This part will focus on introduction to filler, its classification and natural fibers. What are fillers? Fillers are defined as materials that are added to polymer formulation to lower down the cost of the compound and to improve the properties. Now there is an and or written in between it means that they have two functions and along with lowering down the compound cost they may or may not improve the property. They are available in the solid or the liquid form. They can alter the mechanical behavior and the processability of the polymer. It may cause significant difference based on the molecular weight that they possess, the compounding technique that is used to incorporate them in the polymer and the presence of other additives in the formulation. So what kind of interactions they are having with the other additives as well. We look at the criteria of addition of fillers. So the optimum loading level for both property and benefit is what we are looking at. So in terms of property, let us say the tensile strength that we have to attain is 35 megapascal. We are starting off with 25 megapascal as the base property and then uh, you would find that upon doing some product development, uh, you would reach up to 35 megapascal as the property may be at 25% of the addition of the filler. You also need to look at the benefit of uh, whether or not the filler that you are adding is benefiting you in terms of the cost of the product as well. So both property and benefit has to be looked at when we are deciding upon the optimum loading level. The next is the optimum formulation for processing and production output. The third thing is the economics of the filled formulation. This figure shows you the classification of fillers. So they can be classified into four different categories. The first one is based on the performance wherein you can classify it into functional fillers and extenders. The second category is that of the type wherein you can classify it into particulate, rubbery and fibrous fillers. The particulate fillers are further classified into inert fillers and reinforcing fillers. So the inert fillers uh, in short are going to be extending in nature with no change in the property. The third classification is that of the composition wherein we are talking about the chemical structure with the means of organic and inorganic materials. The fourth classification of shape can classify the materials into either spherical forms so something like uh, glass microsphere are spherical fillers and then there can be some flake formed materials so the materials that are present in the flake form. So it can be microstructural as well but then the large structure that you are going to see either it is a simple structure or a microstructure is that is of the flake form. The third one is fibrous fillers something like glass fiber, uh, natural fibers as well like jute, hemp and all fall in the category of fibrous fillers. Now let us look at natural fibers. Natural fibers have good fiber strength and rigidity but then now when we are comparing it with synthetic fiber it may not be a very true thing but then when we are talking about natural fibers in general they have a good fiber strength and they are rigid as well. They have low cost and of course we have environmental advantages. Thermoplastics offer many advantages over thermosetting polymers for use with natural fibers like low processing cost, design flexibility and in case of molding complex parts. However, the problem is processing because of which you would find that processing has to be done at a very very lower temperature. Because the material is mainly composed of cellulose and hemicellulose, you would find that stability above 150 degrees centigrade is a big big problem. Let us talk about the first fiber that is jute. So based on the botanical origin, the two cultivated species of jute out of the eight species discovered so far are tosa jute and white jute. Now we are talking about two species because they are the ones which are more popular as reinforcements. So jute composite is a true substitute of wood and a range of products that are presently being produced from jute composites are sheet or board, door, window, furniture, corrugated sheet etc. The next fiber is coir. Coir is a seed hair fiber which is obtained from the outer shell or the husk of the coconut. So it's very simply the, the outer shell fiber of the coconut. The coarse, stiff, reddish brown fiber is made up of smaller threads and each about 0.01 to 0.04 inch that is around 0.03 to 0.1 centimeter long and around 12 to 24 micron in diameter composing of lignin and cellulose. The processed fiber ranging from 4 to 12 inches that is around 10 to 30 mm in length are light in weight, they are brittle, they are strong and elastic with a tendency to curl. So we must have used our strength on peeling of a coconut and you already know that when we bundle out these fiber together they are extremely high strength materials. They are resistant to abrasion and can be dyed easily. 
significant improvement of mechanical properties is reported in case of composites of polylactic acid, polyethylene, polypropylene, polybutylene succinate, polyester, epoxy and polyurethane with coir fiber. So there is a lot of development that has happened on this part. They are used to make brushes, they are woven into matting and are spun into yarns for marine cordage and fishnets. Glass fibers. Glass is an amorphous material that consists of silica backbone and various metallic oxide components to give the specific composition and properties. Depending on the raw materials that are used and their proportions to make fiberglass, fiberglass can be divided into the following major types. The first type of glass when we categorize is A glass. The next category is that of C glass. The next category which is the third one is known as E glass and as the name suggests it is also known as electrical glass and is a very good insulator of electricity. The next category that is AE glass is an alkali resistant and electrical insulation glass. The last category which is S glass is also known as structural glass which has high tensile strength and is known for their mechanical properties. The next synthetic fiber is carbon fiber. It is made up of thin, strong crystalline filaments of carbon that is used to strengthen the material. Carbon fiber can be thinner than a strand of human hair and gets its strength when twisted together like a yarn. Carbon fiber is five times stronger than steel and twice as stiff. The next fiber that we are going to talk about is KVLR which belongs to the aramid family. KVLR which is polyparaphenylene terephthalamide is a man-made fiber so it's a synthetic fiber and it is of an organic origin from the aromatic polyamide family. So we are talking about aromatic polyamides which the name itself suggests. The unique properties and distinct chemical composition of wholly aromatic polyamides that is aramids distinguishes from other man-made fibers. Let us go ahead with the first material that is wood. It consists of natural polymers like cellulose, lignin and hemicellulose. It is a lightweight material and is less expensive but strong and stiff. It readily absorbs moisture which is one of the drawbacks that the material have. But the wonderful thing here is when you are making a composite of wood and plastic you can incorporate it with plastic and the coatings that sort of it gets with the plastic matrix makes it impervious to moisture. It does not shrink or swell with temperature and can biodegrade if not protected and that is why the use of something like an antimicrobial agent becomes necessary when we are talking about making a composite of wood and plastic. The next material here is clay which is basically a mineral. So it refers to a group of hydrous aluminosilicates. These materials are similar in chemical and structural composition to the primary minerals that originate from the earth's crust. And clay minerals have a sheet like structure. So when I talk about clay, you can take an example of a notebook. So clay looks very similar to a notebook when I'm looking at it from how many pages it has. So it's a stacked structure which has these octahedral, tetrahedral and octahedral layers. So tetrahedral arranged silicate layers are there and octahedral arranged aluminate layers are there. So there are multiple layers that you will have and a single layer will be of nanometric length. So the thickness that this layer has in between 1 to 10 nanometers provided that if you can somehow intercalate the material. So if I have this book wherein these 100 pages are just measuring this much and if I can somehow you know broaden it apart what I'll get is necessarily an exfoliated matrix. The next mineral over here is talc. So talc is a clay mineral which is composed of hydrated magnesium silicate with a chemical formula as shown here. Talc is a plate-like structure. So it's again very similar to what we saw in clay. It is available in the platy form. So talc is a plate-like structured magnesium silicate mineral in which these octahedral brucite layers are sandwiched between two tetrahedral silica sheets. So there will be two tetrahedral silica sheets and there will be an octahedral brucite layer in between. And you can see the sandwich structure or the layer structure that is shown in the figure. There is another image which is showing how it looks like actually when it is mined out and then there is size reduction from which you get the fine powder. 